Hey guys, and welcome back. Now, today I wanted to discuss something that I've been wanting to do for quite some time now. So, since the R Class locomotives, so basically 761 and 711, they have been upgraded hugely. But what happens to the rest of the locomotives, my other locomotives that are pretty far out of date compared to the R Classes? Well, I reckon it's finally time that I start giving some decent upgrades to my locomotives that have fallen behind in terms of being up to date with how I would have built them if I would have done them now. And we'll also do the Bolt Builder stuff which is on the left as well. But let's go to the locomotives first. Alright, so I've got a few locomotives lined up here. So I've got the K-Class, got A2986, the J-Class, and Heavy Harry. Now, you may think these locomotives look pretty good. And yes, I'm not going to lie, I do like the way these locomotives look. But, in my opinion, they could be even better. Now, there's an upgradation that I've been wanting to do to the J and the K for quite some time now. So we're going to leave the pistons of how, how they are. We're not going to upgrade them. But the middle section of the boiler, also these guys are very dusty, I should have dusted them off, whoops. Yeah, the middle section of the boiler is actually smaller than the front dome on the real locomotive. So I'm going to use a new type of boiler design to make that boiler slightly smaller on all angles. So that way this front bit will be slightly bigger than the middle part, which will be more accurate to the real K-Class. That will then allow me to lower that and shorten the whole cab by one whole skinny. Also, I have now learnt the proper name for skinnies. Before, I used to call these skinnies, but they're actually called plates. So sorry about that guys, but I finally learnt the actual name for it. But yeah, the plates, so they're now going to be called plates, not skinnies. I may accidentally call them skinnies every now and then, so please forgive me for that. But yeah. So the whole, they're going to be lowered down by an entire plate instead of a skinny. So yeah, that'll be more accurate to the, to my LEGO R class locomotive. Be lower towards the real one, which is more accurate, I believe. Because I believe the K and the J are a little bit lower in height compared to the R class locomotive. Since they are more branch line locos. So that's one of the big up bigger upgrades for the K and the J. They're pretty much the upgrades I want to do. I'm not sure when it's going to happen, but digital will come first, and then once digital looks good and it's all confirmed, then we'll add it to real life. But at the moment, the J and the K are going to remain like this. That's also going to happen with the J class too. Alright, now on to A2986. I believe this locomotive has some upgrades to do. Let's have a look here. So we've got the middle part, right? And this is supposed to actually overhang, cover the wheel a little, little bit. Well, with a new technique with brackets, I reckon I could do just that and allow that wheel to still rotate. Also, make it rid of that part there because it's still old. Change the coupling to magnet because it's still the original. Because it has been my new locomotives are now magnet instead of the original the whole cab design has to change because that's pretty bad <laughs> yep but that hasn't even happened to my real art class yet it's on digital but not the real one and finally the last two upgrades is i want to push the front in by one whole stud and with the front detailing, I actually want to curve the base as it goes down, just like the real A2986. We may even mess around with the front and make it more like, make it a little bit more wider, just like I did with the real, with my R-Class locomotive as well. So yeah, the upgrades to do with A2986. All right, now last but not least, Heavy Harry. Now this locomotive is by far my biggest and longest steam locomotive that I have built. 
and it is pretty far out of date. So the back bogey and the front bogey there need to be pushed in by a whole stud. So that will shorten the locomotive's boiler by two whole studs. That will look better. And of course the running board as well. The thickness is three plates thick. We now want to decrease that to two plates instead of three. Three plates will then make it more accurate to my real arc last locomotive, the Lego one. But unfortunately, I'm not quite sure how to make the boiler slightly bigger without doing some major changing, changes to Heavy Harry. So he will still have a pretty small boiler compared to the real locomotive. The real logo definitely has a bigger boiler than the R-Class did. I'm also going to add H220 on the side of Heavy Harry as well. And change the old coupling to the magnet coupling. So yeah, quite a few changes to do with Heavy Harry. And with the running board, I also want to take away the plate and add a tile on top instead of studs facing. And do the exact same thing with the front too. It's going to be a little bit difficult to see the front. But yeah, just like the real My Lego R-Class locomotive, I've added cheese slopes and some tiles on like the side bits. There where they're studs, so they're all tiled off. And that will look nicer too. So yeah. Alright. We probably may even make this one thick as well, just like I did with, the re with My Lego R-Class. And change the pistons. We'll do that with A2986 as well, I reckon. So yeah, that is the locomotives. All right, now moving on to my Bob the Builders. Now, these aren't really updates. These are more up changes that I've done to, the, to my um, models already. Let's start off with Dizzy. So Dizzy before, she had a longer face and had lots of multi-colors on Dizzy. Well, now since thanks to the new parts, I got Dizzy now actually has fully orange on her face and her head has also been shortened by one plate I believe so it's a little bit more shorter which looks much nicer and believe and I believe is more accurate to the real Dizzy also finally got the curves the smooth tilings for the front of top of Dizzy's mixer which looks nice too so yeah Dizzy looks quite nice nice the only parts that are not in orange is these wheels and this little frame bit but just like with Lofty you never know it may become a reality Lofty is evidence of that remember when Lofty had black wheels <laughs> Lego finally made blue wheels and now Lofty's got blue wheels. How cool is that? So yeah, never give up. Lego may just make that piece an orange one day. Who knows? Now, with Lofty. Lofty's had a small change. So Lofty's back part is now fully sloped. It's a nice round curve all the way around instead of a cheese slope, the one there. So that is more accurate to the real Lofty, just a small simple change, but it did wonders in making Lofty look better. Lofty's cab has also been shortened the roof by one whole stud, so it overhangs less at the back. I don't know if I've said that before, but yeah, that has also happened. Now, let's go to Muck. Muck, I believe, well I shortened Muck's arm length a little bit. So he used to have two little circle skinnies or plates, whatever you call the little circle bits. There, a red one in front of the gray one. I took that away to make it closer to Muck's front, which looks nicer. And since I've been doing stop motion, my arm has actually lost a lot of friction and has lost friction. So I actually added some blue tack. So now Muck can actually position, position his bucket was at it falling down. So that was very important in order to make stop motion possible with muck. And the one you guys probably noticed the most is there's no more studs on top of muck's 
bucket. They're all tiled off. It looks much better, much, much better. And finally, Scoop has two new changes, maybe three. First change is here. Before that bottom piece was black and the rest was light gray. I looked on the real Scoop and there's actually a bit of a black there and the bottom is light gray. So I changed that around and gave Scoop a little bit different of more of an exhaust, more accurate to the real Scoop. This piece also used to be light gray, but I've got that in yellow now on both sides. So that looks much better too. And finally, with a small, simple change, Scoop's eyes, I slightly angled them upwards. So they're pushed in a little closer to the center, just like the real Scoop. It's hard to tell, but it is there. See, there's a slight gap between the eye and the grill, instead of them touching exactly the grill. So yeah, small changes, but they do wonders in order to make them look great. And yeah. Also wanted to let you guys know, I have now finished school. And I finished school about two weeks ago. It was fantastic. The final assembly was great. And yeah, it's honestly a real, a real relief knowing that school's over. But now it's the next part of my journey in life, which we'll have to figure that out at some point. But yeah, that's pretty much what's been happening now. And yeah, um, you know, maybe I may even volunteer for Steam Rail. That'd be awesome. But yeah, that's basically what's been happening so far. And yeah, also spent nine hours doing stop motion at 1.2. <laughs> Got about 22 seconds of animation, which is crazy, but the nine hours of work definitely was worth it. Maybe I might show you that in today's video as well. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys all next time. And hopefully, these upgrades will come in the future. So, one more thing I forgot to mention with Lofty is you see how on the real Lofty he would have three holes in the back of him? Well, my Lofty has two holes, but I finally found a way to make them three holes. So that will happen again in the future at some point too. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys all next time. Bye!